Okay, starting with Lady Adam. Speaker. Um, so we have in stock, we have a four ohm three watt speaker, but there's a lot of people who have amplifiers that don't drive four ohm speakers. So now we have an eight ohm speaker. It's in a nice little case. Um, so you don't have to worry about enclosing it. You get like fairly good uh, bass and treble response. And we have a JST PH connector on the end. Also, you can always cut and strip it off um, and wire directly, but it's just like a nice all-in-one speaker that's easily mounted. Um, and like I said, you don't have to worry about um, the back of it because it's somewhat protected. All righty, next up we have some cases. Yes, a couple weeks ago, maybe last week, maybe it was two weeks ago, um, we put in um, some resin 3D printed cases for the TRS uh, Trinky and the Pixel Trinky. Now we have them in uh, a clear resin. These are cool. It's a little more expensive than the translucent resin, but for some people who really want um, the clear look, yeah. um, you can see how cool it is. Not only can you see the LED, but you see all the connectors and stuff. Um, we want to experiment with offering this as like a ready to go purchasable um, uh, enclosure. Of course, if you want to 3D print your own, the files are up. It's all open source. Uh, you can print on your favorite printer or send it out to a service. Uh, but folks who folks who don't want to have to worry about that, then they don't want to pay for shipping and wait two weeks. Um, we have them in stock immediately. All right. And then we have the Raspberry Pi yes. Pico 2. Okay, so last week on Thursday, it seems like four years ago, but it was actually six days because um, we didn't get to talk about this last week. There was an announcement. Raspberry Pi released the RP2350. Um, we did a video about it. It's eight minutes long. I'm not going to show it here. Check our YouTube. Um, there's also tons of blog posts about it. It's an update to the RP2040. It has twice the RAM. Um, has about twice the speed. It's an M33 core processor. You can run either the ARM cores or the RISC-V cores, if you're interested in using the open source core. 50% um, more PIO uh, blocks, so you get 12 state machines instead of eight. Um, really cool HSTX um, output peripheral. The Pico 2 itself has four megabytes of flash instead of two megabytes, which is going to be great for CircuitPython. Um, still has, you know, four analog inputs. Um, still has all the standard pinout, like the pinout is equivalent. So if you're using SPI on some pins, those will still be the SPI pins, etc. It's just a nice, nice upgrade. Um, there's also, uh, better, much better low power capabilities and much better, um, uh, so much better low power capabilities and much better security, um, on the chips. They don't have, uh, uh, ARM trust zone built in. So one thing people were before, they're like, oh, how do I sign my firmware so it can't be run elsewhere? Um, well, now uh, it's pretty easy to do because um, it's got it built into the chip. Then they had a uh, hacking bounty. Nobody was able to crack it. So they feel pretty confident um, about this chip. So um, the RP2350, like I said, they're, they are releasing the Pico 2. We don't have them yet. Sign up as soon as we get these Pico yeah. 2s in stock. We will. We're going to do back orders. So when you get a notification, it means we have them in stock. That's right. Okay. Okay. Metro. And we do have our own boards that we're designing. Um, so first up is the Metro design. I'll say I'm actually redesigning the whole thing from scratch because I want to use the bigger B series chip, which will mean um, more pinout. Like I want to turn the SD card into SDIO and I want, you know, maybe a USB port, but you can still sign up. And as soon as the Metro gets into production, you'll be notified. It'll look somewhat like this, but a bigger chip um, and some, maybe some more accessories on it. Um, but the basic idea is it's uh, Arduino Shield compatible. Um, it's going to have a buck converter on the 3.3 volt line, so you can get a couple amps out of it. HSTX output port, so you can get um, using the same 22 pin connector that the Raspberry Pi 5 has. All the GPIO you know and love, uh, numbered in the way you expect. SPI port, I2C, stem QT, boot button, reset button, USB Type C, uh, and a micro SD card slot. All right, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, the customers, and the people in Brooklyn who have given such a warm welcome to Adafruit and all of the team, is the Feather RP2350, which you can see the uh, code name for the RP2350 was Amethyst. Um, so when I sent out boards, you know, I didn't want to put the number on there so you know, there was no leakage. Um, so this is the Feather version. Which is actually pretty much done, um, and we got a wheel of chips, so we will actually be putting this to manufacture, like, any day now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to order PCBs, like, tonight. 
Um, I was just waiting to make sure that there was no last minute changes. Um, the Feather has a slot for PS RAM. It's got uh, eight megabytes of QSpy flash, the RP2350A series, seven QT port, uh, SWD debug port, that same HSTX connector. So you can get eight pins of high speed um, output plus I squared C. So it's great to adapt to um, a DVI display or, you know, if you want to try driving at the MIPI display. Boot reset buttons, uh, NeoPixel, Blinky LED, battery backup and battery monitoring. Um, I think you said USB-C already. Mounting holes, uh, the low power uh, built-in boost or buck converter. And yeah, I think it's gonna be in black, uh, but the prototype is in green. And it's good, we've got Arduino and CircuitPython. Well, sorry, Arduino support's coming soon. CircuitPython support is ready to go. Um, so sign up and then this is going to be, the Metro is probably going to take another month, but this feather will probably be in stock within a couple of weeks.